My name is Santa Ono, and I'm the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of British Columbia. It is our great pleasure to be here with you today. Let's begin today by expressing our gratitude as a group of individuals to the Silks Okanagan people on whose traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory we are gathered today. Please join me in reflecting on the importance of understanding the histories that brought us to this land and to seek to understand our place within that history. At this time, I would like to invite Amber Cardenas and Whitney Cardenas, members of the Okanagan Nation Alliance, to sing the Okanagan song. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. We pause for a moment to give thanks, spiritual and temporal, on the importance of this occasion. We pause to appreciate the many blessings that we share and to acknowledge these proud students and their achievements, their families and friends. Please join us in the singing of our national anthem, led by our University Marshal Nancy Hermiston, Director of the Opera and Voice Program at the UBC School of Music. Please give Nancy a round of applause.
Please be seated. Honored guests, the MLA from Kelowna Mission, Renee Merrifield, Dr. Deborah Buzzard, Dr. Alan Shaver, members of our Board of Governors, the Senate, faculty, staff, alumni of this great university, and most especially you, the graduates and your families and friends, and everyone joining us here today at the Okanagan campus or via the webcast online. Welcome to the University of British Columbia's graduation ceremony. Are you excited? <laughs> what an honor it is for all of us on the platform party to be with you here today in person to celebrate UBC's newest graduates, the class of 2022. Let's hear it for them. Thinking about our graduating students and their proud families always fills us with joy. This is also a special time for our faculty members as their students successfully complete their years of study. This is a time of joy, a time of celebration, a time to come together as one university, as a community, whether in person or via webcast. Let's face it, everyone. Today is a milestone in your lives. You have worked very hard to get to this point of graduation from the University of British Columbia. There have been moments of joy during this journey to this milestone and moments of challenge. And that's particularly true for all of you as you graduate during this unprecedented pandemic. As you graduate, I ask you to keep close to your heart our university's motto, QMS. On the one hand, it means that the degree that you have earned today is yours. It is yours, is one interpretation of what QMS means. And your association with the University of British Columbia will always be yours. But I ask you to remember the other interpretation of our motto to MS, and that is that it's up to you. You see, as your education and the degree that you possess confers upon you a privilege that, alas, most may never have, a privilege of an advanced education and a key that will grant you access to jobs and to spheres of influence within our society that are not yet open to all. And with this key, with this education, and the privilege that comes with it, I submit comes a choice, a choice that you can make on a daily basis with decisions both large and small, a very personal choice. You see, you can choose to focus on your personal success moving forward and all that it will bring your way or you can decide to, as you've done while you're here, dedicate some of that talent and energy and skill, some of that privilege, some of your life, to serving others. You can dedicate your life, in short, to humanity. It's a bold and noble goal, but one that you've already demonstrated while you're here that you are doing. Now, strictly speaking, neither path is right or wrong. There's nothing wrong with focusing on success, and you should do so to some extent, but not ex exclusively so. I ask you to take this moment and consider dedicating some of your life moving forward to humanity, to serving others, to a purpose greater and longer lasting than one's own life. To explain why I ask this of you, I ask you to imagine for a moment a world where everyone is driven solely by self-interest. It would be a world that's deeply polarized and where every sense of community that we cherish would slip away in front of our own eyes. 
It would be a world where we could not be confident that our children and our children's children would be safe without us. Doing simple things like going to primary school. It would be a world where difference would not be celebrated, where self-interest would lead essentially to a smaller world. Focusing on ourselves and our families and our neighborhood, we wouldn't know what's happening across this great nation of Canada. We wouldn't know what's happening around the world and to benefit from the cultures and histories across this great nation. That's what self-interest would do. It would make this great nation smaller. It would rob us of all those experiences that enrich this nation. Such a world would be defined by insular views and distrust of people in other provinces or other nations. But the biggest problem with focusing just on self-interest is it would be a world where we would be incapable of coming together to solve the great existential challenges that we need to face together, that we only have a chance of solving together, marshalling the talents of all of you, but also graduates from institutions across this nation and around the world, together with municipalities and with government. It's the only way that we can address the challenge of not having sufficient potable water, food insecurity, dealing with social injustice in our backyard and also around the world, and of course the biggest challenge of climate change that has affected this great province has resulted in flooding of our farm, affected our ability to create food and to feed all of our families, and great heat domes that have resulted in the death of so many people across this province and the loss of so much in terms of fish and biodiversity that we rely upon in terms of our economy as a province. For those reasons, now would be an appropriate time for all of us, but especially you, our graduates, because of your education and because of your energy and because of the length of the life, your life that lies before you, ahead of you, to reflect upon what sort of human beings and citizens we all wish to be moving forward. I ask you, graduates, to look deep inside, into your souls, and to think about what defines your character. You know, a couple weeks ago, with the shooting in primary schools in Texas and other places, a senator from the state of Connecticut said on the Senate floor, talking to his fellow senators, he asked some very fundamental questions of them. He said, what are we doing? Why are we here? in relation to that challenge. And those fundamental questions apply to each and every one of us and to each of you as graduates. What are we doing? Why are we here? How can we use the education that we have, come together as we must, to address this, these existential challenges that we can only hope to solve together? No individual person, no individual university, how, however great it might be. No single nation can solve these issues and challenges on our own. And I submit to you that your character, our character, as an institution, as a nation, will be defined by our commitment to come together to solve these challenges that need us to work together. You see, if you think back to our motto, to MS, your decision in decisions both large and small isn't just about you. It's not about it is yours. You see, your character will help shape society. Your character, even more important than your intellect that we celebrate today, will help set the course of humanity. To a mess. It's up to you. Congratulations, class.
of 2022. Let's hear it for them. Now, as I said earlier, I'm very pleased to be here today, and particularly at this ceremony, which is the first in-person graduation ceremony on the Okanagan campus since the spring of 2019. Isn't that great? Let's hear it for being in person. Now, just about that time when the pandemic was actually affecting the world, we were fortunate to recruit to this great institution a Deputy Vice Chancellor and Principal from the University of Alberta, a person of integrity, a person of tremendous intellect and tremendous skill to lead this great campus. This is also the first in-person graduation ceremony for our Deputy Vice Chancellor and Principal, Leslie Cormack, and I'm honored to welcome her to the podium to make remarks. Let's hear it for Leslie Cormack. Thank you, Mr. President. I am delighted to be here, and I hope you all are delighted as well. Hello, welcome to everyone. We've made it. Congratulations to every one of you. This is our first in-person ceremony since 2019, as you just heard, and my first since coming to UBC. It's safe to say that I have looked forward to this almost as much as all of you. Another member of the platform party who I know has also been greatly anticipating this day is Deborah Buzzard. Dr. Buzzard, who is today's honorary mace bearer, was the principal and deputy vice chancellor before me and is a renowned plant biologist. During her time as a leader of the Okanagan campus, she took part in graduation ceremonies for eight years where more than 13,000 degrees were conferred. If I move anywhere, it's on the shoulders of giants. I am so delighted to be the Deputy Vice Chancellor after Dr. Buzzard, and I really thank her for coming here today. Her last ceremony of 2020 was, as you all know, virtual. So as I say, I'm very pleased that she's able to join us for our first in-person ceremony. And I really want all of us to recognize Dr. Buzzard with a round of applause and thank her for being with us today. I've attended many graduation ceremonies in my academic career. I've attended ceremonies as a graduating student, both undergraduate and graduate, as, as an academic leader, as a supervisor of graduate students, and a teacher of undergraduate students, and perhaps most arguably the most memorable of all, as a parent of a graduating student. One might think it gets old, but the ritual seems overdone. But that has not been my experience. These rituals tie you to the millennia of scholars who have walked this way before. You sit here not just with yourselves, but with people who have, have trod this path for a thousand years. This is the moment when you all become part of that great body of scholars who can change the world for the better. Standing up here and looking out at all of you I can feel the, the excitement, the, the joy, the relief. I can see your professors, your friends, your parents, your loved ones sharing this moment with you, and maybe that relief as well. And I know that many of you have loved ones around the world who are thinking of you at this moment. The pride is palpable and well-deserved. Today is the accumulation of years of assignments, exams, late nights, light bulb moments of inspiration. It's, it has taken resilience, dedication, and perseverance to reach this moment. And this has never been truer than of all of you, our students who endured and indeed thrived despite a global pandemic. To be here with you all in person is especially meaningful. These last two years have been difficult for everyone and I know that they have been especially hard for students. 
juggling the sudden switch to online learning in 2020, a year of remote learning, a gradual return to campus, hybrid back to Zoom, what are we doing? Um, you were presented with challenges that you couldn't have imagined five years ago. It hasn't been easy. And yet, you are here. You did it. And all the challenges that you have faced melt away in this moment of joy and accomplishment. You should all be beyond proud of yourselves. We certainly are proud of you. Today is a day of possibility. You've spent the last years preparing yourselves, not for this moment, but for all the rest to come. Your time at UBC has equipped you to excel in your future career and to be the engaged, committed global citizens we all need in this constantly changing world. When you think of all the students here in the room who will go out into the world and bring with them positive change, it is awe-inspiring. It's the reason UBC is here as an institution. You are the reason we are here. To equip you, to empower you, so that you can move into the world and be the drive to change the world. You have now officially, or at least once you've walked across the stage, joined the ranks of scholars. You are admitted into this great congregation of scholars in demonstration of all that you've learned and achieved. Congratulations. But know, as you go into the world, that with this privilege comes responsibility. You are now responsible to think rationally, to look for evidence, to find creative and innovative solutions, to right injustices. Never forget that. You now are one of the people who can change the world. When you leave here today, please know that UBC is here to support you as you join the ranks of UBC's distinguished alumni. This illustrious network includes prime ministers, entrepreneurs, astronauts, artists, world changers, and now, each of you. I encourage you to keep in touch throughout your career and know that, you, that we look forward to welcoming you back many times as your life goes on. Graduating from university is a remarkable achievement, and I want to offer special congratulations to this graduating class for enduring and indeed thriving in this challenge, challenging environment. As you revel in this moment of well-earned celebration, remember that our future is in your hands. Not to, not to give you too much pressure. So looking out at all of you, I have high hopes of that future, and I wish you every success. On behalf of the University of British Columbia and the entire Okanagan campus, congratulations, class of 2022. I'm now pleased at this time to call upon Madison Pankratz, member of the graduating class, to make remarks. Madison? Thank you, Dr. Cormack. Mr. President, honored guests, and fellow graduates, on behalf of Alumni UBC, I'm honored to welcome you into the alumni family. You now belong to a community of change makers and leaders that is more than 385,000 strong. Graduates like you who are looking to make a positive difference in the world. Visit the alumni tent after our ceremony to see what it means to be a new member of the alumni family. Before I started at UBCO, I had a clear idea of who I'd be four years later when I crossed this stage, and that I would finally have a sense of who I was. Everything that I thought was wrong. Most importantly, it took me five years, not four. I always craved my own sense of identity. I wanted to know who I was, and I believed that university would be the place and time to define myself as a person. In a house with seven children, it was clear I'd have to do that for myself. My mother still doesn't always get my name right on the first try. And my five-year-old sister has started calling me sister as she's not quite sure which one I am. I think I did define myself during my time here, just not in the way that I thought. 
I believed it would come from my time in the classroom, the things I wrote on paper, and the marks I received. That all came crashing down after my first midterm. That was the first time I cried as a university student, thereby founding what would become a regular bi-weekly tradition. <laughs> and by bi-weekly, I don't mean every other week. I mean twice a week. <laughs> I put everything I was into a 15-mark test, and it went badly, and my sense of self-worth plummeted. But now we all understand that who we are is not determined by the midterms and finals or the papers and lab reports. Not the bad marks and not the good ones either. Because when we reflect on our time at UBCO, we're gonna look back on our experiences, relationships, and memories. My fondest memories include my first course union pub night where I got to meet the people standing at the front of my lecture hall. The first time I was tutoring a student and a concept finally clicked and the countless nights I spent burning the midnight oil, laughing with and encouraging the people I now call my best friends. These experiences helped me develop into the person I am today, someone who is passionate about helping others, wanting to make a difference, even if it is only in the life of one person, and someone who has people that she can rely on, but also is someone for others to rely on. This is why I'm grateful I came to UBCO because this small campus offers a close-knit community with so many opportunities for its students. Sure, it had the benefit of being an hour away from home so I could steal my parents' groceries, but it is also a place where I could discover who I was by taking part to contribute to its community. Not every university can offer an undergraduate student the ability to be a teaching assistant, a supplemental learning leader, a course union or club executive member, a peer mentor, a tutor, or to do research in the lab or in the field. And taking part in these opportunities have showed me that teaching is something I'm passionate of and something that I'm capable of. And that being a nerd about chemistry is not something to be ashamed of, but it actually has a really cool community of fun, like-minded people that I get to take part of. I know each of us has experiences from UBCO that have revealed something about us to ourselves. I would never have had these opportunities and would never have come here if not for my family. I grew up in a small home in Penticton with six siblings, a cat, a couple of fish, a three-legged dog, my dad, and my mom. My parents raised me to be independent, kind, and disciplined, but most importantly, they always supported me to chase whatever I set my mind to. When I was four, I wanted to be a white horse. My parents could have tried to convince me that this was impossible and that I was, in fact, allergic to horses. But instead, they cultivated my interest by buying me stuffies and Benadryl. In high school, I wanted to be an actress, so they put me in musical theater and attended, multiple times, our low-budget school production of Footloose, in which I played the coveted role of Beaumont teenager number four. And finally, I wanted to attend UBCO. They helped me choose classes, make personal budgets, and apply. And now that I'm graduated, I'm proud to say that I get the privilege to work alongside and learn from one of my personal role models, my dad. Everything I wanted, my parents supported so I could get there. I wouldn't be who I am or here today without them in my corner cheering me on. And we all have people like this in our lives to thank. This was not an easy journey for any of us. We did something that's really hard under normal circumstances. We got a university degree, except we did it during a two-year global pandemic. So congratulations on your accomplishment, and thank you. Thank you, Madison, that was amazing. I would now call on Dr. Rahan Sadiq, Provost and Vice President Academic Pro Tem, to introduce the Award for Teaching Excellence and Innovation. Good morning. I'm pleased to introduce the Award for Teaching Excellence and Innovation. This award including a $2,000 prize, recognizes outstanding teachers at the Okanagan campus. As nominated by students, faculty, colleagues, and alumni. 
This, the award highlights the importance of teaching in creating an outstanding student experience. It is my privilege to introduce one of the year's recipients, Dr. Firas Muswi, from the Department of Computer Science, <laughs> Mathematics, Physics, and Statistics. I invite Dr. Musfi to come forward. <laughs> I, I will read short citation now and present a certificate recognizing his accomplishments. Dr. Faraz Musfi has been significant driver of teaching and learning innovations at UBC, using technology-enabled solutions and personal connections to support and engage his students as partners in learning. He has inspired his students and colleagues alike with his passion for and thoughtful approach to teaching and learning innovation. Dr. Musfi is deeply committed to the success of his students and emphasizes the importance of not only learning, but also understanding course content. He continually refines his teaching techniques based on student feedback and teaching and learning research literature. Dr. Musfi is a strong advocate for building a community of teaching and learning. He has conducted and facilitated more than 10 scholarship of teaching and learning projects and is passionate about providing opportunities for students to make meaningful contributions to them. Congratulations, Dr. Musfi. those masks straight. It's tricky. So, here we come to the moment. Candidates for the degrees, please rise. <laughs> Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting the candidates for degrees who have successfully completed their studies and fulfilled the conditions that the university has set for them. The Okanagan Senate of this university recommends them to you for the degrees which will be announced by representatives of the faculties. As each degree is officially conferred, the dean of the faculty, and in the case of graduate students, the dean of the College of Graduate Studies will congratulate the student. Janice Glisnikoff and Colin Pritchard, members of Alumni UBC, will present each student with an alumni handbook. The candidates will please be seated. Now, we're about to get to the really important part, but before we get started, I wanted to share a few instructions with you. Graduates will follow the instructions of the marshals. They will, they will keep you from doing anything silly um, to leave your seats and line up to graduate. You'll have three opportunities to get your photo taken. One on the floor before you walk up the ramp to the stage. There. One when you come up on the stage and are standing over here to my right as your name is being read out. And another photo when you cross to meet me. It's the paparazzi time. When you cross to meet me, we'll be looking over here um, for the photo together. Please be sure to have your, your degree parchment with you. And you'll notice in your degree parchment that it has a coat of arms. So please make sure that it's right side up, because that will annoy you forever when you have those pictures on the wall. As you cross the stage, thank you for wearing your mask. For those of you who are graduating with your PhD today, you'll come toward me with your hood to be hooded. Please remove your, your uh, cap so I can put on the hood more easily. And you know, if you're way taller than me, a little scrooching down would be valuable too. Um, all right, is everybody ready? 
Let's get started. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Tristan Hay. Dr. Hay demonstrated how a curricular goal-setting intervention in a first-year university science course could increase students' intrinsic motivation, self-control, control of learning beliefs, and metacognition, all factors associated with persistence and academic success. This research sheds light on how educators may reduce the high post-secondary attrition rate seen across the globe. Dr. Hay. <laughs> Riley Patillion. Dr. Patillion developed active learning activities for the first year chemistry classroom and evaluated their impact on student attitudes towards chemistry and academic achievement. He found that by engaging with the learners and making connections to real-world chemical contexts, students would have a greater appreciation for chemistry's role in society and earn higher course grades. Dr. Patillion. <laughs> Mitra, Mitra Tabataye. Dr. Tabataye identified the essential role of two different ion channels in morphological anomalies of glioma cells that underpin the progression and therapy resistance of cancers in the brain. These proteins can be targeted to control the progression of invasive brain cancers. Dr. Tabataye. Vicky Kumar Prasad. Dr. Prasad developed new computationally inexpensive methods that enable our accurate quantum mechanical modeling of chemical and biological systems. The methods he developed are valuable for those interested in designing and discovering medicines, catalysts, and materials for various applications. Dr. Prasad. Krista Giles Hansen. Dr. Giles Hansen studied the effect of cumulative forest disturbance on water and carbon cycles in the interior of British Columbia. A new method for regional forest evapotranspiration was developed. The region's forests are a significant carbon source. Differences in water use efficiency between climate zones have management implications. Dr. Giles Hansen. <laughs> Nicolas Piet Lozier. Dr. Piet Lozier combined regional field mapping and microanalysis of fault structures to document the geologic evolution of the Appalachian Mountains. In the process, he contributed to the fundamental understanding of mountain belt evolution, fault formation, and displacement in the context of continent collisions. Dr. Piet Lozier. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Master of Science. Abisola Zainab Kehinde. <laughs> Mackenzie Campbell. John Hume. Uma Farhana Kushi.
Jinx Pollard Flamand. Min Ton An Noyen. Jeffrey Gates. Marian Yagubi. Jason Andrew Reich. Eric Ray Kramer Baxter. Yatin Dale. Akshita Churamani. Pujitha Gautaman. Thompson Hawks. Ryan Honig. Freeram Murali. Vicens Paneke Fernandez. Afrin Tukil. Samuel Velez. Luka Vukovic. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Arantia Victoria da Fonseca Paco. Brooke Kwan. Emanuela Odiru. Sophia Miranda Ventosa. Mika Yang. <laughs> Duty Rugu. <laughs> Tara Ann Hopgood. <laughs> Liam Bystrom. Alexander Stewart Campbell. Neil Fraser DeVries. Cassidy Evetkimov. Vicky Lam. Taylor McIntyre. Victoria Robert Goslin. Christy Richards. Minyu Zen. Justin Zimmer. Amber Scott. (laughs) 
Noah Lee. <laughs> Hannah Olson. <laughs> Madison M. Pancrot. <laughs> Darina Bekova. Long Pan <laughs> Filson Ahmed Abokor <laughs> Hidus Ashalu <laughs> Kate Alyssa Amaral Jovan Singh Atwal. <laughs> Jocelyn Baines. <laughs> Anna Katerina Bernach. <laughs> Dominique Eloise Boswell. <laughs> Ashley Bruce. <laughs> Vanessa Carloni. <laughs> Riley Imrit. <laughs> Emily Houghton. <laughs> Gerlin Jassy. Steven Gian. <laughs> Brayden Allen Jones. <laughs> Agata Kochi. <laughs> Clara Ann Letif. Alexandra Elizabeth McKinnon. <laughs> Seamus Mc Alexander McRae. <laughs> Alexander Mitchell. <laughs> Herein Merles Alloway. Constanza Andrea Ogwen Vargas. <laughs> Kate Morgana Poiré. <laughs> Jesse Reed. <laughs> Jacob Amadeo Russo. <laughs> Noah Lorenzo Russo. <laughs> Alyssa Maya Packy. <laughs> Alexis Baraska. <laughs> Leo Volderma. Volderema. <laughs> Adele Yu. <laughs> Kiana Nicole Hamilton B. <laughs> Paige Barbara Defoe. Parker Hebert. <laughs> Ditesh Mukesh Bhatia.
Thomas Matthew Hanna. <laughs> Emily Florence Jashinsky. <laughs> Munta Chaweb. Shane David Adams. Gabrielle Bloomquist. Arash Borari. Danielle Shalut. Tanvir Singh Dhaliwal. Simon Milan Dubrell. Vaughn Makota Dykstra. Connor Jones Gautier. Anton Hugo. <laughs> Gurkamel S. Kalati. <laughs> Cree Hetner. <laughs> Moise Khan. <laughs> Jade Lorraine King. Riley Litalian. <laughs> Haley May McFarlane. <laughs> Jasmine Mann. <laughs> Megan Martin. Cody James Henry Melnick. <laughs> Annette Francis Merkel. <laughs> Joel Muller. <laughs> Bunmi Ojo. <laughs> Levy Benjamin Austin Brink. <laughs> Alexis Percival. <laughs> Taylor Margaret Mary Pettyjohn. <laughs> Caitlin Peverly. Sophia Reimer. Logan John Schreiner. Katen C. Souster. Amy Vanderwick. Eric Wambacher. <laughs> Kiara Miranda Brody. <laughs> Morgan Jessica Watton Tucker. <laughs> Natanya Jeffrey. Sarah Satran McQuaig. <laughs> Nicholas Griffin. 
Joshua Clayton Gobind Anderson. Ebony Willow Brown. Amy Linnea Anna Fowler. Brianna Pickett. Komapreet K. Rahill. Jason Marco Vukilik. Katie Wirt. Z. John. <laughs> Hannah Bellrose. <laughs> Chow Urchin. <laughs> Alicia Lasco Green. <laughs> Laura Jean Kelly. Evan John Kriper. <laughs> Ziyu Yui. <laughs> Natalie Zofia Noyshevsky. Woo! <laughs> Nicole Joanne Ursula Noyshevsky. Damon Polson. <laughs> Anton Tolsma. <laughs> Anchel Kukian. <laughs> Laura Pokriatz. <laughs> Paul Sharpaletti. Alexander Warner. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the University of British Columbia Medal in Science, head of the graduating class, Megan Yukova Greenwood. Jasmine Annalie Barbanoff Lamoureux. Jalini <laughs> Theroux. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Ferguson. <laughs> Lauren Bevandick. Sonia Erica Brune. Autumn Kelbert. Owen Kerslake. Sophia Madison Kostiuk. John, or sorry, Caden John Lutmerding. <laughs> Luca Ivan Mystic. <laughs> Brett Filger Heidemacca. <laughs> Amanda Lauren Purnell. Pranit Rolani. <laughs> Mariah Georgia Robertson. <laughs> Leanne M. Benson.
Bridget Ann Hallen. Millicent Manila. Jun Ming Hu. Joseph Spaulding. Alina Ray Carl. Mackenzie Kathleen Wallace. Emily Newton Gurner. Heather in Cornish. Thomas Campbell. Logan Brett Pay. Corey Andrew Barakoff. Taylor Lee Defoe. Sierra Vita. Kaylin Atamanchuk. Hanson Wang. Hugh F. Blakemore. Thomas Andrew James Dauber. Marissa Fair. Kennedy Fletcher. Clark Larson. Christopher Gill. Sanreet Burke. John Richard Lutzi. Austin Tower. Cameron Ray Sharp. Abisola Eula Adebulebe. Allison Leem. Yun Yi Luung. <laughs> Hannah Helen Mahane. <laughs> Selena Spence. <laughs> Eileen Samantha Yo. Kendall Tenshi Akune. <laughs> Haley Beck. <laughs> Dong Yu Chen. <laughs> Lindsay Madison Chesum. Robin Crowell.
Nicole Durgis. Inderpal Singh Dosange. Olivia J. Eichberger. Zoe Anna Flamen. Javina Cower Gill. Danilo Tally Sansondal Gordon Romero. Jasmine Susan Han. Riley Holt. Emma Mary Kalen. Sheldon M. Langlois. Cassandra Marie Matot. John Ray Node. Nichatkan Para Obma. Emily Parsons. Osren Pekovic. Samantha Bikhoi Poon. Stephanie Schrode. Erica Jane Fitzig. Riley Thorpe. Sarah Vakoevich. Alicia D. Davis. Liba Khan. Jay Young Lee. Jillian Godin. Ian Robert Kennedy. Maya Patel. Bradley Tartar. Rachel Manke Lau. Julian Mitichuk. Leonardo Mutano Caffarello. Tyler Nathan Tuwako. Samantha Cole. William Hazen. Yao Yu Li. Parker Mel. Marcus DeClue. Emma Bruch. Katrina Elizabeth Carswell. Yeah. 
Madeline Jenny Tchaikovsky. Lindsay Doherty. Haley Alyssa Dong. Benjamin Dubé. Molly Fizzard. Oriane Defoso Floats de Pozul. Eamon Hughes. Maxwell Ebert Jenkins. Taylor Bryn Conshu. Tess D. McCall. Claire Olivia Miller. Joy Prasad Savangowder. Anne Zeng. Pasa Uehura. <laughs> Megan Wilkinson. <laughs> Olivia Goodwin. <laughs> Jaslia Ann Tompkins. Emerson Ferrier. <laughs> Mahika Vinay Hedge. All the graduates, please rise. For those graduates who have just crossed the stage today, and for all of those who are unable to attend today's ceremony, with respect to the appropriate degrees as shown in the program, it is our honor to officially admit you to our community of scholars called the Convocation of UBC. Let's hear it for them.
The convocation of UBC is almost 400,000 strong. It includes alumni who are leaders in every sphere and sector of activity around the world. As you know, three prime ministers from Canada, multiple Supreme Court justices, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and uh, leaders in every uh, arena of, uh, of, of forming arts and uh, visual arts and literature have graduated from this great institution. It has been a great honor and privilege to join you today and to have admitted you to this convocation. All of you have invested a great deal of determination, focus, and hard work to obtain your degree. You have had a lot of support along the way, your family, friends, and peers. And you know, I got to tell you, Madison, uh, I was very, very uh, touched by your remarks and watching your family at Sherlong and to take videos, and I gotta tell you, just yesterday I was at my daughter's high school graduation, and I don't know, when I was actually taking my video of my daughter, I was tearing up, so I don't know how you guys could hold it together, but it's, uh, I can tell you it's really a very, very uh, major milestone in the lives of every family uh, to be there and watch your, your youngster who, uh, who began, and you remember the very first step, uh, complete, complete all their studies and to, to reach this milestone uh, in their lives. Many of your friends and family uh, and peers are here in this hall. You probably know where they are. Turn around, take a look, find them. This would be a perfect time to turn around and show them your appreciation. Let's hear them. Give them a huge round of applause. And if you could turn around and fa face all these great faculty members who have been there with you every step of the way. Let's hear for the faculty members on stage today. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce somebody who I am very fortunate to call a friend and a mentor an icon in British Columbia. He's someone who, like you, is a graduate of this great institution, go on to become a judge, and then the first indigenous lieutenant governor of the province of British Columbia, and the first indigenous chancellor of UBC, and that is the one and only honorable Stephen Point. He's going to uh, share some remarks with you by video. Please turn your attention to the screen. Thank you, President Zono. My name is Stephen Point. My traditional name is Hulikultal, and I'm honored to be the Chancellor of the University of British Columbia. It gives me great pleasure to be celebrating with you today, even though I can't be there with you in person. It is also my honor and privilege to welcome you as the newest members of Alumni UBC. You are now part of a global network of more than 370,000 UBC graduates who live and work in 140 countries around the world. Your life's journey has brought you this far, and I'm sure you have a great distance yet to travel. I wish to congratulate you for your amazing achievement and also to acknowledge your hard work and sacrifices made during your time here at UBC Okanagan. Remember that we all create our future by that which we think, say, and do, that we live in a circle and we gain that which we give out. So don't forget to give back to someone who needs your help, for it's in this giving that we manifest true happiness for ourselves. Once again, warmest congratulations to all of you and very best wishes. I would like to think, take this opportunity to thank our Chancellor, Stephen Point, for joining us virtually at today's ceremony. Let's give him one more round of applause. It's especially wonderful to have Chancellor Point join us for his first graduation ceremonies here in the Okanagan since his installation, which was held virtually in 2020, uh, the times we live in. I'd like to share a little bit more about the Chancellor. 
Um, just like you, he is a graduate of UBC and earned a law degree in 1985. He went on to have a career as a lawyer and a judge, as you heard, and became British Columbia's first Indigenous Lieutenant Governor. He's also UBC's first Indigenous Chancellor, and we are so thrilled to work with and learn from him and are grateful for his wisdom, his guidance, and his teachings. Thank you so much, Chancellor Ch uh, Point, for everything you do to guide both campuses. Let's give him one more round of applause. Are you Thank you, President Ono, and all of our honored guests for joining us today. Friends, this does bring our ceremony to a close. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope that you've all enjoyed it as much as I have and that all of you will be able to join us for refreshments, will be, which will be served immediately after the ceremony in the courtyard in, in the alumni, at the alumni tent. I always feel that we're part of a family, and what we do as a family is we eat together. And so hopefully we can all do that as we, as we move out from this wonderful event. Guests are kindly requested to remain in their seats until the academic processions have left the building. But before we begin the procession, we have one more big moment. Parents, family, friends, uh, this is going to be a photo op, so you might want to get your cameras ready. This is a ta the time-honored tradition known as the cap toss. All right, everybody ready? Um, you've been waiting for years for the opportunity to do this, so let's get it right. So. The key to a successful cap toss is synchronization and attitude. I leave the attitude to you. But to ensure we're all in sync, I'll lead you with a prompt. So will the graduates please rise and prepare for the toss? You have to remove your caps. I already got you to do that. And hold them in your hands, but don't toss them yet. In a moment, I'm going to wish you one final congratulations on behalf of the University of British Columbia. When I say the word Columbia, that's your cue to toss your cap high in the air. And parents, your cue to start snapping photos. All right, everyone ready? All right, here we go. Honored guests. President Ono, dignitaries, family, friends, please join me in congratulating once again the 2022 graduates of the University of British Columbia. Thank you.